What's up guys, it's Brad from Ladder Architect here. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can create a window explosion inside of Blender 2.82 utilizing the Chaos add-on. I will be going through the explosion creation process from start to finish, showing you how to add various fuel particle systems as well as several debris fields to bring your explosion together. We did an explosion tutorial about a year ago that was very similar to this one, but Blender has changed a lot since then and we have updated our Chaos explosion add-on as well, so we're going to give it another go here. Anyways guys, let's get started. Here we are inside of Blender and the first thing we're going to do is of course delete everything in our scene here. And uh, we're going to go ahead and go to our Chaos tab here. First we are going to build a uh, proxy window that we can blast some particles out of to have a base for the simulation once we add our CGI building into our scene. So we'll go ahead and scroll down here to our collision cube operator and we'll just add one here. As you probably know, this collision cube has properties that allows it to interact with both particles and smoke and fire. Uh, you can, of course, do this with any object you want by just uh, enabling the collision or fluid physics with it. But this is just a nice little operator that we made for it. And uh, we'll go ahead and just create a uh, little window with some collision cubes here. So we'll just bring it up and we'll scale it up on the Z axis and uh, something like this. And we scale it down on the X axis and uh, we'll duplicate it. We'll just kind of create a little box here and then we'll select both of these, duplicate this, rotate it on the x-axis 90 degrees. And uh, now we have a little window that we can blast our particles out of. We might increase these on the z-axis. And uh, essentially what we're doing here is we want to make uh, a little window so that our smoke volume has something to interact with so it's just a little bit more organic of an explosion. So we'll go ahead and select all of this here and we'll just go to object and join. And now this will be our uh, proxy window for our explosion simulation before we add our main CG building or uh, live action footage if you choose to use your explosion on live action. All right, so we'll go ahead and just place our window here in our scene. And uh, now let's get to creating our explosion with a few fuel particle operators in the chaos add-on. So we'll go ahead and first choose uh, when we want our explosion to start here. So we'll go ahead and go to frame 24 on our timeline. And then we'll go ahead and open up the chaos tab once again here. And uh, we'll go and under the chaos tab, we will select the dynamic smoke fire option. And uh, we're going to be using the directional burst, which has some pretty good settings already for a window explosion operator. But we'll go ahead and adjust a few of the particle parameters before we add it to our scene. We'll uh, leave most of these the same here, but we'll uh, change the particle start size to 1. And uh, we'll increase the fuel start amount to 2 and the fuel end amount to 1.5. And that's just so we have uh, a little bit more fuel at the start of our fuel field. And uh, we'll go ahead and under the smoke velocity parameters, we'll change the initial starting velocity to 0.1. And that's just so the uh, particles, when they initially come out of the window, they have a little bit less motion in them. And then when they die off near the end of our explosion, they uh, have a little bit more motion in them and are a little bit more organic. And uh, something you can play around with. This is not something that has to be done really, but uh, I found that it just makes the uh, smoke explosion look a little cooler when it has a little bit higher ending velocity. Uh, anyways, let's go ahead and select where we want to add our explosion. So maybe the center of our window here. So we'll put our 3D cursor there. Then we'll select the directional burst operator. And uh, now as you can see here, we have a directional burst here along with a smoke domain cube here. And uh, this is the base of our explosion simulation. And uh, as you can probably tell, the scale of everything is a little bit off, so let's go ahead and adjust everything. So we'll go ahead and play through our simulation. And uh, as you can see, our window is a little bit off scale, so let's just go ahead and instead of scaling our particle explosion and smoke domain to the window, we'll just scale the window to our particle explosion. So we'll go ahead and select our window here, and we'll just scale it way down, and we'll just place it so that the particles blast directly out of it, something like this. And uh, we'll go ahead and select our smoke and uh, fire directional particle emitter. And uh, we'll go ahead and under the particle tab here, we'll change its viewport display to cross. And that's just, I like to uh, work with my fuel fields when they're in cross mode just to get a better idea of what they're doing. So we can play through it here. And uh, this is looking pretty cool. I think we'll just, maybe we'll bring the size of the window down a little bit. Something like this. All right, so this is looking pretty cool. Let's go ahead and adjust our smoke domain around our fuel field here really quickly. So we'll just bring it over 
so it's just surrounding it as best we can. We want to get the smoke domain big enough to capture the whole simulation, but as small as possible so that we get the most detail for our resolution divisions. So this is looking pretty good. We might bring it up a tiny bit just to make sure we're getting our smoke simulation in there properly. And uh, something like that should be pretty good. This could actually create a pretty good window explosion already, but I'm just gonna add two more directional operators to build our explosion a little bit better. So the first one we're going to add is we're going to add another directional burst that has the same settings, but we're just gonna make our emitter a little bit smaller to create a kind of a core of fuel particles to make our core of our explosion a little bit denser here. So we'll go ahead and go back to frame 24. Once again, we will choose our 3D cursor where our explosion is going to start, and then we'll click on directional burst. And as you can see, now we have a second directional burst operator, and we'll scale this one way down, and we'll just put this one in the center of our previous one. There are so many different ways you can build explosions. This is just one way to do it. You can uh, really just add a crazy amount of operators here using our tab and just, you can add omnidirectional burst, 360 ground burst, whatever you wanna add to kind of build that fuel field. But this is just for, again, for this tutorial and for the result that I got at the beginning of the video, this is something that we did. So just, uh, you know, feel free to play around with uh, different ideas that you have. And as you can see, it's almost the exact same here. If we just go to viewport display, we'll change this one to cross here. Maybe we'll change the frame start of this particle system to be one frame later to give it a little bit of variation. So we'll change this one to something like uh, 26 and then we'll change the end frame to 28. So it's just a little bit more dense of a particle system. Now we have a little uh, denser field going on here. And we might also bring this one back a little bit. So it's just a little bit of a different look. All right, so this is looking pretty cool here. The last particle system we're gonna add is just one that kind of fills in the base of our window here. And one thing that I've noticed when I've made a lot of explosions is a lot of the time, the smoke and fire at the base of the explosion tends to fade off a little bit more quickly than the rest of the simulation. So I like to add a little particle field that just has a very short lifetime near the base of our explosion here to just bring everything into our scene so that we just have something there near the end of our simulation as well. So I'll go ahead and we'll go back to frame 24 here and uh, we might just go a few frames later maybe frame 27 and uh, we'll go ahead again we'll select our 3d cursor near the origin of our explosion and we will add another directional burst and this one we will put around the same place um, but what we'll do is we will go to the particle tab here and we'll change the lifetime to three and then we will, under the velocity setting here, we'll change the normal velocity, which essentially is how fast the particles are going, to something like 12. And as you can see, it's just kind of creating a, a separate kind of particle field near the base of our explosion. And I'll go ahead and change the display mode to cross again, just to get a better idea of what it's doing. Yeah, it's just kind of creating a little base here. And it's a little bit uh, too random here, so we might just bring it a little bit further away from our other particle systems here. Just kind of experiment with it. We want it to blast out the window a little bit more. Right now our window is blocking it a little bit. So let's just try it out again here. Maybe we'll just put this even closer to the window so it gets a chance to get out the window. And that's looking pretty cool. We might increase the number of particles of that one a little bit, maybe to something like 120. And uh, yeah, that's looking pretty good. Just creating a little base there. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and save our project and then adjust our smoke domain settings. And then we'll give it a bake and see what our initial simulation looks like. So I'll go ahead and go to file, save as. We'll make a new folder here. We'll call it window explosion tutorial. Call it window explosion. Save it. And uh, then we'll go ahead and select our smoke domain here. And uh, we'll go ahead and go to the physics tab here while our smoke domain is selected. And we'll, uh, we'll keep a lot of the settings the same, uh, but we will adjust a few of our settings here. So let's go ahead and open it up. 
We'll leave the resolution divisions at 196. As you probably know from our previous videos, the higher the resolution divisions, the uh, larger scale your smoke simulation tends to look. Uh, of course, it also adds a little more detail to it as well, but we can add smaller scale detail with our noise uh, checkbox here later. So we'll go ahead and leave that at 196 and uh, we'll leave a lot of these the same. We will change the smoke vorticity to something like 0.1. And uh, what smoke vorticity tends to do, a lot of the time when we're using Mantaflow to do our simulations, we get kind of this ink drop style look where the smoke looks almost like fluid. And uh, it can look really cool, but sometimes you want to break it up a little bit. And uh, you can either break it up with uh, a little mix fuel operator here, or if you want to just do it throughout the course of the explosion, you can just add a little bit of vorticity. And I found that tends to just break it up a little bit and give it a little bit of an, uh, a little bit more of that smaller scale uh, violent look. So we'll just put that at 0.1 and uh, then we'll go ahead and we'll go to the fire tab here and uh, a lot of the time for a lot of our tutorials we'll decrease the reaction speed of our fire so we'll also do that in this tutorial essentially what this is going to do is it's going to make our fuel fields burn a little bit slower maybe we'll try a reaction speed of something like 0.28 and that'll just let our uh, fuel field burn off a little bit slower just so it has a slightly more gasoline style look uh, but still has that debris like feel and uh, you can experiment with this as well if you want a more gasoline style look you can bring this reaction speed way down uh, but this is kind of a middle ground between like a debris look and uh, that uh, slow burning gasoline style and uh, we'll leave everything else pretty much the same here and uh, we'll go ahead and go to the smoke cache and this is where we can choose where we're going to save our smoke simulation data and uh, since we started our explosion at frame 24 we'll go ahead and simulate our explosion for four seconds so we'll put our end frame of our simulation data at 130 and that's around four seconds just a little over four seconds and uh, we'll go ahead and choose our uh, folder here where we want our smoke simulation data to be saved so i'll just go ahead and choose that same window explosion folder and we'll add a new folder here call it window explosion tutorial cache and we'll select that and that's where our computer will save our smoke simulation data and uh, yeah this should be pretty much it here once again we'll save our project just in case our computer doesn't like us and uh, press bake data and then give your computer some time to simulate your explosion all right guys so we are back and we have baked our initial explosion simulation as you can see it looks pretty cool here i'm gonna say this is a pretty nice looking result for a window explosion and uh, again this is just our proxy window here we can add whatever building we want here later in this video but now let's go ahead and as usual i'm going to use the opengl render active viewport option to play our explosion back in real time so that we can get an idea of what it's going to look like so i'll just go into the viewport here and just choose a frame that we like and i'll go to the render tab here and I'll just change the uh, percentage of resolution here to something like 65 just so we're not rendering our preview in such a high resolution and then we'll go ahead and change our end frame of our animation to around uh, 130 where our simulation stops and uh, then we'll go to view and uh, viewport animation and as you know blender is going to go through all of the frames of our animation and simulation in preview mode so that we can play it back in real time and they get an idea of what our explosion is looking like all right, so we'll go ahead and close that here. And then to play it back in real time, we'll just go to render and view animation. Now, as you can see here, we can get an idea of what that window explosion is gonna look like. It's looking pretty cool. We could have added a few more particles blasting downward from the window here, but I think for the sake of this tutorial, it's gonna look pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and bake that high resolution noise on top of our original explosion simulation. So we'll go ahead and close this here. And uh, if we want, we could uh, switch to cycles really quick. We could add a light to our scene and let's get an idea of what our explosion looks like even without the high resolution noise. So we'll just add a little area light here and we'll change the power of it to something like 5000. Just put it our, above our explosion really quick. And uh, then we'll go to the environment panel here. We'll add a sky just for some ambient light. And uh, then we'll go also go to the uh, render properties tab here and under the light paths we'll change the volume bounces to six so our light bounces around our smoke a little bit then we'll go under the volume tab here we'll change our step size to 0.05 and our max steps to 260 for a little bit more accurate uh, shading and then we'll go to our film tab here we'll change it to transparent just so we can render this on an alpha channel and uh, yeah now let's go ahead and go to our shading tab with our smoke domain selected and it's going to open up EV rendering but let's go ahead and go to our right viewport shading option here and it'll go into cycles 
let's see here we'll just choose a little frame here for a second and uh, let's see if we can find our chaos fire shader down here and uh, we'll go to render mode up here and just see what we're getting so far and uh, our area lights a little bit bright so we'll go ahead and bring it down all right, so as you can see, it's not looking too good right now, but don't worry, that's just because our shading is a little bit off. We'll go ahead and select our smoke domain here, and uh, we'll go ahead and just increase the density quite a bit. Since we don't have as many fuel particles in this simulation, it makes sense that there's not quite as much smoke as some of our previous videos. So we'll go ahead and increase the density to something like maybe 1,000. Then we'll also increase the contrast to something like three just scroll around here and again we don't have that high resolution noise baked on our simulation yet so we still have a lot of detail to add to the simulation we might increase the density a little bit more we might even try something like 2000 and uh, we'll come back to this once we bake that noise on top of it but I'd say uh, if we let it render here it's looking pretty good already I think it's gonna look like a nice window explosion we can go for a little bit further in our simulation here as well say it's blasting out our window pretty nicely here and uh, once we tweak our lighting and our uh, material settings after we bake that high resolution detail on our smoke simulation I think it's gonna look pretty awesome and that high resolution noise is just gonna kind of cut up all of the uh, smoke and fire here to give it a really nice looking uh, result so anyway let's go ahead and go back to solid mode here we'll go back to layout and uh, while our smoke domain is selected here we'll go to our physics properties tab and then we'll just scroll down here to our noise tab here and we'll go ahead and select the noise checkbox and now we're going to bake that high resolution noise onto our original base mesh now we could do an up res factor of three but i think two is going to be just about right for the detail we need for the camera angle we're going for so i'll go ahead and leave it at two for now and we'll go ahead and press bake noise and then give your computer some time to bake this noise on top of your original base mesh all right guys, so we are back and we have baked our high resolution noise onto our original smoke simulation and it's looking pretty nice and detailed here. So let's go ahead and do a little uh, test render here and then we'll go ahead and add our various debris fields to the scene. Let's go ahead and add a camera to our scene really quickly. So we'll just press shift A and we'll add a camera here and we'll just put this off to the left for now. Just kind of pointing it at our window here. Take a look through the camera here. Maybe we'll change the focal length of our camera to something like 35, maybe 32. Looks pretty good. And uh, we'll try this out for now and uh, go ahead and go to rendered view to see how we're looking. And uh, I'd say we have a pretty nice looking simulation here. We have some uh, pretty good detail in our smoke and fire. As you can see, our fire is kind of burning off here at the end. We might adjust the materials a little bit more, but I think it's looking pretty good. Let's go to the start of our explosion around frame 24 and see how it's looking. And it's uh, not quite dense enough near the start of our explosion. So we'll go ahead and adjust a few material settings as well. But it's a good idea to just kind of go through different parts of your explosion to see how everything is looking. And I think near the end of our explosion it's looking uh, pretty nice. Our smoke is kind of dissipating nicely. But I think generally what we need to do here is just increase the density of our smoke at the beginning of our explosion. So we'll go ahead and go to frame around frame 20 maybe 26 right when our explosion erupts or probably 28 now we have a good combination of our initial fire blast as well as our smoke here and we'll just go ahead and select our domain cube here and then we'll go to the shading tab and uh, view it in rendered mode and now let's just adjust a few of our shading settings to get a little bit better result here so i will go ahead and increase the density of our smoke a little bit just uh, so that we have a lot more debris coming out of our window so we'll go ahead and increase our density to something like 4,000 just to give an extreme example. Then we'll increase the contrast a little bit to make it look a little thicker, maybe to something like five. And maybe we'll boost the density a little bit more to 5,000. We just don't have a lot of smoke in our scene here because we don't have a lot of particles. So we have to kind of boost our smoke density and smoke contrast up quite a bit. And uh, this is looking pretty good. We might even increase the density a little bit more. Maybe we'll try something like 6,000. All right, I'd say that looks pretty good. We're getting a lot of detail here, but we are losing a little bit of our fire as well. So we'll go ahead and go to the flames brightness here and we'll increase this to something like try 20, maybe a little bit too much. Might decrease the flames contrast to four. Let's see how that looks a few frames in. That's looking pretty nice. We got some pretty good detail here in the fire. Might increase our smoke density a little bit more, maybe to something like 7,000. 
and uh, normally I wouldn't increase my smoke density this much uh, but since again since we have so few particles blasting out of our window here uh, it's kind of necessary to make sure that our smoke shows up in our scene most effectively and I'd say this is looking pretty good we might increase our flames brightness just a little bit more to something like uh, 26 maybe I say this is looking pretty good and we'll try later in the blast see how it's looking and we have that kind of secondary explosion here that we've added as well which is looking really nice and our smoke is looking uh, very dense as well so I'd say this is looking like a pretty nice window explosion simulation now that we're done with our materials let's go ahead and quickly adjust our lighting on our simulation here so we'll go ahead and go back to the layout mode here and uh, let's just go ahead and put two lights on our scene here we'll have one edge light and then we'll have one light that's a little bit more frontal to fill in the shadows a little bit and this is looking pretty good already but uh, let's go ahead and adjust it a little bit and uh, right now we kind of have a little top light going on here so let's go ahead and select our area light we'll just push it behind our smoke put this one like a backlight in our scene just kind of backlighting the smoke give it a little bit of an edge and then we'll boost it up to something like try something like 8,000 and we'll view the camera one more time see what it does for us and now as you can see now we have a nice little edge of light around our smoke which is looking pretty cool but obviously we also need some light on our smoke here in the foreground from camera so let's go ahead and do that really quick go ahead and go back to solid mode and uh, we'll go ahead and while this area light is selected we'll just duplicate it really quick and we'll put another one of our lights just off to the side here just rotate it toward our explosion this is looking pretty good let's go ahead and see what that looks like through the camera go to rendered mode here uh, it's not actually doing what we want it to do maybe what we'll do here is we'll just bring this second light as a top light on our smoke like we had it originally and then we'll just have this backlight here to bring out the smoke from the background so we'll just put this one directly above our scene here let's see how this looks I'd say this is looking pretty good here. We have a nice little edge and then we can see some pretty nice detail in our smoke here in the foreground as well. All right, so I'd say this is looking pretty good here. We could adjust a lot of these smoke settings even more, but I think this is looking pretty nice. So we're gonna leave it for the sake of this tutorial. Feel free to play around with it and uh, see what different kind of lighting setups do with your scene. But now let's go ahead and add our debris fields. And uh, then finally we'll add our CG building to our scene and make this explosion blast out of the window. So we'll go ahead and go to solid mode again and uh, we'll go ahead and select the smoke domain here and we're just going to go to the physics panel here and disable our smoke for this part of our tutorial so we can add our debris fields and uh, our computer works faster as we add those debris fields so we, since we don't have to render the smoke volume as well and uh, we'll go back to frame 24 where our explosion is going to start and again we'll select our 3d cursor where we want our debris to blast out from and then we'll go to the chaos tab here again first we'll go ahead and deselect our dynamic smoke fire checkbox and uh, we'll go ahead and add our glass particles first go ahead and select that we'll leave all of our chaos particle parameters the same for now and we'll just click on directional burst and uh, now as you can see we have a directional burst with some glass particles attached to it let's go ahead and scale it down a little bit like the rest of our particle simulations and we'll just put it so it blasts out the window here and these particles just like our smoke particles will interact with our proxy window here as our collision object just go ahead and play through it here see what it looks like it's already looking pretty cool here I would say and let's go ahead and pull it back so this is just a little matter of experimentation to see what we like I think it's looking pretty cool already but I kind of like the way that the glass particles are interacting with our collision window object here so if we go ahead and increase the size of our particle field maybe we can get a little bit more interaction as you can see here now we have some more interaction as it bounces around inside of our little proxy window here and it gives a little more organic result and uh, let's go ahead and go to the particle settings tab here of our glass debris field we might increase the number of particles to something like uh, 700 just so we have a little bit more particles blasting out the window and uh, we'll leave a lot of these the same we might increase the randomized setting to 18 so we have a little bit more random velocity and organic look that looks pretty cool and uh, we'll also go to the render tab here and we'll increase the scale of our glass particles as well I will increase this to 0.1 and then we'll increase the scale randomness as well to 0.8 and that's looking pretty cool, I would say. Maybe we'll bring the scale down a tiny bit to 0 0.07. All right, that's looking pretty good. We'll bring the scale randomness down to 0 0.6. 
And again, this is all a matter of experimentation. You can play around with the different settings. I'm just showing you the settings that I usually play around with to get different results. All right, so I'll go ahead and the last thing I usually like to change when I'm playing around with these particle systems is under the physics tab here. I like to play around with the forces and uh, we have the drag and dampening forces on right now just so we have a little bit more control over the particle system and how it blasts out through the window. It kind of gets slowed down by both the drag and the dampening forces. Uh, but if we were to decrease these, it would likely be a lot more realistic of a simulation, but it would be a little bit harder to control. So let's go ahead and play through it here. And as you can see here, at a certain point, it kind of just stops and everything starts going downwards. And that's just because the drag and damp forces are slowing it down to a point where it just goes straight down. It's not as organic as we like it to be. So what we'll do is we'll just decrease our drag force to something like 0.7, and then we'll decrease our damp force to something like 0.03. Let's see what it does here. Now it looks a little bit more organic and you can bring these down all the way down to zero if you want. I like to still use them a little bit because they allow you to control where the simulation goes quite a bit. Um, but I think this is looking pretty good for now so we'll go ahead and leave it. And I will also go to the physics tab here and we'll just have one more frame here which is going to emit those glass particles. So we'll just change the end frame to something like 30. That'll give us a little bit longer of a blast. And uh, this is looking pretty good here. So let's go ahead and bake our particle simulation really quick. So we'll just go under the particle tab here when our glass debris field is selected and we'll go to the cache and we'll just go ahead and press bake. And uh, now essentially Blender has baked the animation of these particles into our scene. So now it doesn't have to uh, figure out the physics simulation every time. All right, so now let's go ahead and select our smoke domain once again. We'll go back to the physics properties tab and re-enable it. And uh, we'll just go to view mode here go under our camera again and uh, let's just go to render mode and see what we're getting and uh, yeah I'd say this is looking pretty good it got some nice glass particles blasting out with everything I might decrease the size of my particles a little bit but I think for the sake of this tutorial it looks pretty good uh, now let's go ahead and we'll add one more debris field we'll go ahead and add a rebar rod debris field just because I feel like buildings might have some rebar rods in them as part of their structure so it would make sense so we'll go ahead and go back to solid mode and then we'll just do the same process that we did with the glass except now we'll do it with the rebar rods so we'll go ahead and select our smoke domain and we'll go ahead and disable our smoke preview and we'll select where our explosion is going to start from we'll go ahead and make sure we're on frame 24 where our explosion starts and then we'll deselect the glass particles checkbox and instead we'll use the rebar rods and we'll go ahead and select directional burst and now as you can see we have a directional burst with rebar rods here and uh, we'll just scale it down and position it where we want and let's see what this does for us and uh, here we have some rebar rods blasted out. Already it's gonna have different settings from the glass since we tried to make every particle field have different physics, uh, but we can adjust these as well, obviously. So let's go ahead and go to its particle settings now. And we'll just increase the number to something like, uh, we'll do try 250. And it's blasting pretty close to our explosion. I think this would probably be pretty good just because we probably want our rebar rods to go less of a distance than our glass particles as they would be a little bit heavier than our glass particles. And uh, we'll just go to our render tab here under our particle physics and we'll increase the scale of these as well to something like 0.1. Now they're a little bit bigger. Then we'll also increase the scale randomness to 0.5 so we have a little bit more of a random result. And uh, we'll go to the uh, velocity tab here and we'll increase the randomized velocity just because I feel like this rebar debris field is a little bit too uniform and everything's kind of staying together so if we increase the randomized setting here to something like 15 if we play through it here now it'll be much more random that's looking kind of cool we might decrease the size of this and blast it out a little bit closer to the window so it doesn't interact with the window quite as much and maybe a little bit too much randomized we'll try 10 instead and I'd say that looks pretty good. We could uh, increase the normal velocity a little bit as well, just so it's uh, blasting out a little bit faster, maybe something like 18. And now I'd say that looks pretty good. We have some rebar rods blasted out with our glass debris field a little bit further out. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and go to our cache tab under our particle settings. And then we'll go ahead and press bake for this particle system as well. And now we have this system baked into our memory. And again, we'll select our smoke domain here and we'll go ahead and re-enable it in the viewport. 
and uh, we'll go to view viewpoint just uh, choose a frame here where we want to see the explosion maybe frame 36 and go to rendered mode and now as you can see here we have some rebar rods buried within our smoke as well to give that debris like blast a little bit more emphasis and uh, i'd say this is looking pretty good let's go ahead and add our building as our final touch to this explosion and then get to exporting it uh, so let's go ahead and go back to solid mode here and uh, we'll go ahead and select our proxy window as well and we'll just go ahead and under our scene tab here we'll go ahead and enable our camera restriction toggle here and I'll go ahead and deselect it in viewport mode as well as camera mode so that our camera doesn't render it in our scene. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to replace this area with a building of some sort or essentially you could just render out this explosion as it is and then overlay it on top of a building in your 2D compositor with live action footage or a different background. For the sake of this tutorial we'll be going ahead and adding a CG building to our scene as well. So we'll go ahead and open up our tab here and we're going to be using our City Builder 3D add-on assets here and we have uh, 45 different assets to choose from metropolitan assets sci-fi future assets and uh, derelict future assets and I'll go ahead and just choose the uh, metropolitan large one and add that to our scene here and I'll just place this kind of where the explosion is happening so we'll just kind of bring it over here and just place it by our explosion here and we should also probably scale it up just because our explosion is kind of making it look a little bit too small yeah, and now it's just a matter of uh, trying to be precise with your placement of the building to kind of match that proxy window that we created originally. All right, so let's see how that's looking through the camera. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I think this video is getting a little bit long, but you get the idea. Just kind of place your building where the proxy window was and uh, have the blast come out of it there. And I'll go ahead and finish up this tutorial showing you how to export your explosion or your animation with an OpenEXR file format so you can composite it as best you can. So we'll go ahead and go back to solid view here and I'll go to our output settings here. And I usually render my smoke between uh, 40 and 60 samples, but I'll go ahead and put it at 40 for now. And uh, you can go below that, but uh, it just kind of depends on the speed of your computer. Sometimes I bring it down to even like 25, 26, and then do a little bit of denoising in post. But I'm going to go ahead and do this one with our render samples at 40. And uh, again, we'll keep our volume bounces at around 6. And uh, we'll make sure our film is on transparent, as I showed you before. And uh, under the Layer Properties tab here, we want to make sure that we're exporting an emission pass here. And that's just so that we can composite our flames separately, so that we can add glow just to them in whatever compositing uh, software you're going to use, including Blender. You can composite all this in Blender as well, but I tend to use After Effects. But it's just important to get the emission pass exported as well, just so we have a little bit more control. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and go here to our output tab here and uh, we'll go ahead and switch our file format to OpenEXR just so we have good dynamic range for compositing and everything and make sure we're under the RGBA setting and we're going to use an alpha channel as well and uh, here is where we can export our file so let's go ahead and click on this folder here and we'll just choose a folder where we want to export our animation sequence so we'll just go to window explosion tutorial and I'll do window explosion export and we'll go ahead and name it Window Explosion 3D Pass. And uh, make sure we're at 100% resolution here. And then under the Compositing tab, this is where we can use the nodes to export our Emission Pass as well. So you have that layer for just the smoke and fire. So we'll go ahead and press Shift A, do a file output here. And we'll connect the Emission Pass to it. And then we'll select our folder on this file output and we'll make a new folder called window explosion emission pass rename the file as well and uh, yeah that's pretty much it you just go ahead and press render and render animation and uh, I'll just do a little test render here I'll go ahead and choose a frame that we like I think frame 36 should be good and I'll just render out a quick frame here and then uh, yeah give your computer some time to render out your explosion Alright guys, so we are back and Blender has rendered out our explosion frame here and it's looking pretty cool. Obviously, as I said before, we should place our building a little bit more precisely so our explosion is coming out of our window a little bit better. But yeah, I hope you get some ideas on how you can create some cool window explosions with some various debris fields. I would normally render out my debris fields on separate layers just so we have some more freedom in compositing. But of course, that's up to you depending on what you're going for in your final compositing process. 
Anyways guys, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave any comments if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. We will be releasing more videos like this on our YouTube channel, so be sure to let us know what you'd like to see next. I'll see you guys next time.